heavily armed police open the doors to a series of large containers, a hideout of sorts. They find no criminals inside. But when they open the door, they discover a torture cell replete with household tools and the scariest looking dentist chair you've seen in your life. It's a testament to a new form of extreme violence plaguing one very small nation. No, it's not Mexico, it's not El Salvador or Honduras. This is Belgium, the land of chocolate, waffles, and incredibly strong Duval beer. It's just become the center of a bloody global drug war. It's the new capital of cocaine, a problem with likely only one solution, something no one wants to admit, but we'll get to that soon. How has this happened? In cutesy Belgium, known for its wonderful chocolate and excellent beer, a country of historically low crime rates, the kind of place where you could leave your doors open at night, where the most dangerous threat in the street was a pet pooch on the loose. One thing many Europeans used to say about Belgium is that it wasn't a very exciting place, that it was maybe even a tad on the boring side. When young Americans travel around Europe, they usually skip Belgium to experience weed cafes in the Netherlands or take selfies with weird-looking royal guards in London. Little do they know that these days Belgium is anything but bland. It's now a country where you might find some of the world's most dangerous drug traffickers having shootouts in the streets, throwing grenades around, and chopping the heads off their enemies. It's now the country on the mind of every South American drug trafficker, whose new best friends are some of the most ghastly gangs to ever plague the planet. Roll over, America. Europe has taken your place as the apple of the cartel's eyes. Belgium is indeed Europe's new cocaine capital, the trafficking part anyway. It's now the center of the Europe coke market that's blown up over the last decade or so. The most Charlie users in Europe per capita are in Albania, a Balkan nation which we'll talk about a lot today. The second highest rate of users is in England and Wales, with more devil's dandruff devotees there than are in the USA, per capita at least. That's right, the European market is now ridiculously profitable for global drug gangs. The English, the Dutch, the Scottish, the Spanish, the Danish, they can't get enough of the lines of loquacity. Even the British Parliament toilets were recently discovered to have traces of cocaine around the gilded porcelain tanks. And those are the guys telling everyone they're gonna get tough on drugs. Cocaine is everywhere now in the UK, at least for folks who aren't so skint that their tipple of choice is a 3-liter bottle of super strength Frosty Jack cider. Many of those that can afford it do it, and traffickers are only too happy to take care of the demand. The South American drug traffickers know only too well about this burgeoning market. These days, they know Europe is a much better prospect than exporting to the US, where, as we'll explain later, things have been a bit difficult for them. In 2020, Antwerp in Belgium was where a whopping 40% of cocaine seizures in the EU happened. We're not talking a few kilos here either. The authorities intercepted a massive 11.5 tons of coke in one seizure alone that year. That was one of the largest seizures of coke in the history of the global drug war. Few have matched it. When US cops seized 20 tons at the Port of Philadelphia's Packer Marine Terminal in 2019, people talked about broken records. The media was all over it, saying the street value of that stuff was 1.2 billion. In Europe these days, that's just par for the course. In Belgium, multiple ton seizures have happened quite a bit recently. This is not something everyone expected just a few years ago. Another news report stated that European cops seized 30 tons in 2020. Although the seizures happened in Belgium and elsewhere in one great big sting, 2020 was a bumper year. One newspaper wrote, a record 213 tons of cocaine were seized in the European Union in 2020. In 2021, it was reported that 100 tons of coke were seized in Belgium alone, making this country the king of European coke that year. That is a ridiculous amount worth many billions on the streets. So, you might just wonder how those traffickers can afford to lose so many billions of dollars in gear in just two years. Well, the answer is that most of their drugs get through. They can afford to take some losses. In the book Narconomics, the writer who used to be the editor of The Economist in Britain explained just how the narco economy works and why the traffickers can easily stay in business while losing so much of their precious commodity. The actual leaves that are bought from the South American farmers of the coca plant are as cheap as anything. After all, they're just leaves, and the farmers don't ask much for them. Turning them into high-octane powder costs a bit more, but it's also pretty cheap, as it's usually done by poor folks often hidden in the forests. The base product costs hardly anything at all. We're talking peanuts, pennies, but a gram of cocaine on the streets of England might cost up to $100 or more if it's the high-purity stuff. Maybe less than 60 bucks if it's the bargain basement variety. In other parts of Europe, coke also costs a fortune. In Australia or Saudi Arabia, where cocaine from Europe might be sent, you're looking at over 200 and 500 a gram, respectively. 
A gram of pure coke, coke that would be cut up and diluted many times over, might cost less than a dollar for a cartel once it's been refined. There are so many middlemen after that that the cost goes up by fractions every time it goes through them. But the most expensive bit is transporting the stuff. Once the coke reaches European shores, it's worth a fortune. But so much of the stuff gets through, and its street price is so high, that losing a small amount of it to stings and busts hardly impacts the cartel's bottom line. The European authorities say that they only seize about 10% of the coke that hits European shores. So if $1 billion of street price cocaine ends up at the hands of the cops, there's many more billions out there being sold. One of the reasons the cartels love Europe is that the Europeans really, really are good at logistics. The Germans are well known for being very organized, but so are the Belgians. If you want your package delivered fast, you can't beat going through Belgium. It has excellent infrastructure regarding transportation, maybe the best in the world. And that's why the traffickers love it. They dig Antwerp especially, which is the second largest port in Europe behind another favorite of theirs, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. They know very well that the port at Antwerp alone deals with about 12 million containers every year. The authorities cannot possibly go through every last one of them with a fine-tooth comb. That's what they need to do, since the cartels can hide the coke well. Sometimes they don't even bother hiding it, they just shove it all in a container and hope for the best. There are two reasons for this kind of confidence. One is that they know all the containers can't be checked. When they send it, in some cases, it's just the luck of the draw if their container will be one of the containers that gets opened. The authorities are basically dealing with needles and haystacks, and the needles only get found one-tenth of the time. You have to remember that all these transportation companies you use make promises to you about delivery times. That's how they get your business, with assurances of next day or a few days delivery. If they told you your imported goods would take a week or a month to arrive, you wouldn't use them. It's also important to remember that many of the goods that are transported are perishable. It's no good getting a huge batch of bananas a week late. The container will look and smell like a giant gym sock by then. The authorities cannot possibly just stall everything so they can go through every single container. That's why British parliamentarians don't even have to worry about getting a coded message on their phone saying there's no blow. There's always blow. There always has been. South American traffickers love that Europeans are so reliable, much better than the US, where they get less bang for their buck, and there are all sorts of extradition laws that they'd rather stay away from. The US is also stricter regarding checking containers, but it can afford to be because it isn't the center of the world like Europe. The coke going through those massive ports in Europe spreads far and wide. As we said, European coke has gone through the roof in the last few years. There's another reason why South Americans like dealing with Europe. The new vicious gangs that have sprouted out of the ground like poisonous plants. These are no-nonsense, extremely violent gangs that have come onto the scene in the last two decades or so. Many of them are from Balkan states that not long ago were all war-torn, places such as Albania, Croatia, and Bosnia, where men understand extreme violence well. They grew up among war crimes and relatives being beheaded. They know severe poverty, corruption, and they are hard as nails that they use to crucify their enemies. These mafias are as ruthless as they come, and they're also very reliable. They've spread all over the UK like a blistering rash. It used to be that many of the gangs there were old school types, folks that embraced what you might call a criminal code. They used guns only when necessary, but the Albanians don't think twice about employing their trusted Kalishnikovs. It's well known in the British gangs that the Albanians should not be crossed. Life is cheap for them. They'll kill you over nothing, and if they need to send a message, be prepared for body parts to be thrown into your garden. On a British crime podcast, the host talked about a case where the Albanians removed a man's eyes, just gouged them out like balls of ice cream. These are not people to be messed with, which is why if they've taken over most of the drug trafficking and selling scene in such a short time, they have no code. They will hurt your family. They will take out your teeth with pliers. That dentist chair we showed you in the intro wasn't some movie prop, it was every bit real and such chairs will get used often, from Antwerp to London to Amsterdam to Paris. A news report said the chair had straps on the armrests and footrests and was fitted out for torture. Next to it were saws, shears, scalpels, tape, pliers, balaclavas, and black bags to be placed on the heads of the unlucky occupants. These are just two recent headlines in British newspapers, two from very many similar headlines. Balkan gangs have seized control of a bloody network of drug trafficking from Ecuador to Britain. Members of an Albanian drug gang beat a man to death using weapons including a baseball bat, brick, and bamboo stick. Neil Woods, who worked undercover in the UK as a pretend drug dealer to infiltrate gangs, has talked a lot about how in the 14 years he did the job, he saw violence escalate to levels he never could imagine. He's now an anti-drug war activist. 
mainly because he learned throughout his time in the police force that whenever the cops have a victory and arrest a gang member, the gangs get much more violent because they now have to take stricter measures. Most British traffickers don't want to risk getting caught, so the super violent Balkan gangs come in as they don't give a damn, they've grown up among fear and terror. These new gangs have recently made partnerships all over South America and are known for their reliability, so naturally the South Americans love them. The Balkan mafias have introduced new drug routes, expanding from Southern Europe to Northern Europe and making Belgium one of their most lucrative locations. They've turned the country into a narco state almost overnight. According to numerous reports, this once fairly quiet country is now home to gun battles in the streets, grenade attacks on homes, countless kidnappings and torture, one story mentioning a meat grinder. Officials in the country are now saying they've been taken over by narco-terrorism. Everyone wants in on the drug money. Drugs are just too lucrative to turn away from. In a very long, well-researched book called The Drug War, A Secret History, the author points out that the authorities in Europe hardly ever make a dent into the amount of drugs that end up on the streets. They know the drug war cannot be won. They know what's happened in Belgium was always going to happen. It was only a matter of time. This is why, partly. A truck driver who's never ever broken the law can become a millionaire and retire just by driving across a European border with a large shipment of coke in his truck. That writer interviewed many former customs officials, cops, and drug lords, and he found out that just one trip can earn a truck driver over a million. There's no shortage of people willing to risk prison for that amount of money. Some drivers are literally queuing up to give it a shot. Think about it, in some parts of the EU a kilo goes for 60,000 euros. It might have cost just 1,500 euros to make in Colombia, so if the truck driver gets paid a meager 1,000 euros for every kilo, he's a millionaire with a ton. That's just a little bit more than a million bucks for a few hours work. Again, there are lots of people getting paid this way, but a thousand per kilo for the driver is standard. He is of course risking a long time in prison, and if the kilo goes for 60,000 euros and the driver only gets a thousand, there's 59,000 euros per kilo to go to the European mafias and the Colombians, who usually only get paid if the shipment gets to where it's supposed to be going. Others who might get paid are the people who are supposed to fight the war on drugs. The book also talks a lot about corruption, about how back in the day London's Metropolitan Police was contaminated by cops who were making tons of cash from the traffickers. These cops could retire early in any way. They knew quite well that if one shipment was stopped, another 10 would get through. Why not make some money? Custom officials in the UK have also had dirty hands in the past. This is what's been happening in Belgium recently. The Balkan gangs have been paying officials to get their shipments through. In 2020, the Belgian head of narcotics was arrested. You heard that right, the man in charge of chasing the drug mafias. He'd been helping them get their drugs delivered by giving them information. Around that same time, someone working in the Belgian public prosecutor's office got done for the same thing, as did some Belgian civil servants, tax officials, hospital administrators, and three cops, all for being in cahoots with the mafia. Mexico, don't worry, it's not only you guys who have crooked officials. Those that can't be bought often have to live in fear, with protection teams around them 24-7. Even on the lower end, people can be bought. It was discovered that guys that worked at the Antwerp port were being paid $50,000 for ignoring a container or two. That's 50 grand to a low-paid man or woman for simply turning a blind eye one night. Hardly even a crime. It could put your kid through university. Would you be tempted knowing drugs will get through anyway? Come on, you know you would. And if you don't play ball, you might be given the option silver or lead. Would you risk your life and have your kids cry at your funeral just to prevent some loudmouth London bankers from getting a gram or three and talking about how they're killing it in the stock market? The answer is probably no, which is why stopping the flow of drugs is so hard. The drug war book we just mentioned also explains that the authorities usually have an informer they work with. Still, the informer will often tell them about a small shipment as he ensures much larger shipments get through. He uses the cops and sends them to the wrong place, after which the only outcome is a schmuck mule getting arrested and spending a decade in prison, where there's just as many drugs as there are on the outside. The newspaper headlines talk about a great bust when much more drugs have gotten through. That bit is never mentioned in the press. These gangs can do what they want as evidenced by a man who's responsible for creating what the media called a cocaine pipeline from South America to Europe. He is the Albanian drug kingpin named Dritan Rajepi, who recently walked out of an Ecuadorian prison after doing his business from his posh cell. The guy has so many officials in his pockets, there's no space for all his money. His rap sheet is a mile long, and he's done more amazing prison escapes than El Chapo. You only don't hear about guys like this because the US movie scene isn't interested in European criminals. But make no mistake, 
Despite the lack of a Netflix series being made about him, Rajepi is every bit as big as El Chapo was and arguably a lot more ruthless. He's the head of an empire, but as always, if his head were knocked down, another five heads would immediately spring back up. The money's just too good. The news tells us that super cartels get taken down and tons of drugs get seized, but this is only the tip of an enormous iceberg. Just ask anyone who takes coke in Europe. How many droughts are there? None. Getting a bag of marching powder is easier than going to Tesco and buying a can of beer. And at least the dealers don't charge delivery costs. The authorities, meanwhile, say they're stepping up their fight, but critics say they've been saying that for decades. And there are more drugs than ever, purer too, and cheaper. The drug war, which costs hundreds of billions a year, over one trillion in the US alone since it started, might be the biggest failure in the history of humankind. It's so bad, it's biblical. The war is also a giant industry, employing millions of people worldwide in the police, courts, prisons, and the many industries that make stuff for prisons and police and courts. How can you just shut down this huge industry? Millions of people would be out of work, politicians would look daft. Prisons for profit would suddenly seem quiet in the absence of non-violent drug takers. In Belgium and the rest of Europe, many people now admit this drug war cannot go on. As in the US, many folks are saying drugs should be treated as a health issue, like in Portugal, which has seen positive results since decriminalizing drugs. The same critics say all the billions spent on fighting drugs should go towards this health crisis, and at the same time, all the mega-violent people that work in this blackest of markets would struggle to flourish, especially if the government actually controlled the drugs. Activists said since the war has failed, and pretty much anyone in a city worldwide can easily buy drugs, wouldn't it be better if they got safer drugs in a safer environment? A book called Chasing the Scream has convinced many folks that this is the best option. It says the drug war is a human rights disaster of vast proportions. Which is why in Europe right now, you can read all kinds of articles saying things like, ending the war on drugs is an urgent historic responsibility. The last thing the Balkan mafias want, or for that matter the gangs in the US, and over the border and down below, is an end to the drug war. It's their bread and butter, just as it is for the prisons and police forces and to some extent, the politicians over the last 90 years. Now that Belgium has been turned into a narco state, the drug war has really hit home for the people that live there. A Belgian federal prosecutor named Frederick van Leeuw said in 2021 that part of his country is now a world where morality has totally disappeared. Another official in Belgium said, We all know that the war on drugs does not work. Even though the government announced at the same time that it's going to get tough on drugs, it wants to get tough on gangs who for decades have shown they can adapt to any sort of law enforcement initiative. And when things do get tough for them, they resort to much more macabre forms of violence. In 2022, the Belgian government said the country's justice minister had to be given around the clock very expensive armed security after an assassination plot was uncovered. When the going gets tough, the tough get going, is the saying that springs to mind. If there's demand, there will always be mafias and cartels, and it seems that they're always willing to up the ante where violence is concerned. Just in the last few years in Europe, they've executed state witnesses, used an anti-tank rocket to bomb a major newspaper, and like the authorities in the Middle Ages, taken to sticking a severed head of an enemy on a bridge as a warning. And that was in the Netherlands now playing second fiddle to Belgium in the orchestra of outrageous atrocities. And we've only talked about a few mafias working in Europe today. Don't get us started on the Chinese Mafia, the Russian Mafia, the Serbian Mafia, the Turkish Mafia, and the now seriously powerful Moroccan Mafia. They all want a piece of this incredibly large, supremely bankable European pie, which just so happens to now be mostly in Belgium. But that could change any time. With that in mind, we'll finish this show with a quote from a European that you all know named Albert Einstein. He might easily have been talking about the war on drugs. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Now you need to watch Cocaine vs. Heroin. Which drug is more dangerous? Drug addiction. Or have a look at the most ruthless and dangerous gangs in the world.